Hey Internet, I'm Chaz. And I'm Dan. Welcome to Finest Serious Business, episode 213. Wait, no, this... it was... Oh yeah, it is 213. This is the New Year's show. Chaz is confused. We did things a little out of order. Because well, I'm drinking. Notice we've got nothing on the table tonight for the New Year's show. That's because we're doing a double blind for me, single blind for him. Yep. I we bought sparkling wine. Yes. And Just uh, like last year. Just like last year, we got one champagne... And the two wines from somewhere else in the U.S. or... We're going to take a moment to talk about one of Chaz's weaknesses. He cannot pretend he doesn't know wine when it's in the bag. In exactly. Front of him. Yeah. He sees those differences. Can't suspend the disbelief. So we've got our friend Matt, who's been on the show a number of times before. Pouring for us in the background, this is wine number one. This is from one of three regions, right? Three sparkling yeah, wines from three anything. regions in the world. <laughs> I love wine shows. Could be Miller High Life. All right. <laughs> this is a good time. I don't know what any of these are. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. We're this, having a good time. This is life. This is good. This All is right. life. Yeah. Super fruity. But it's got a little of the brioche yeasty thing going on. Just a little on the bit. nose alone, if this is not champagne, I am shocked. Props to props on the nose to whoever made this, regardless of where this is from. Yeah, it's definitely not the. Like it's, it's definitely lemony. I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, don't talk to the camera. Talk to the camera. It's it's, it's uh, more along the lemon citrus sort of young, uh, either young red apple or like tart green apple. Um, but there's like the the, the yeasty sort of bready yeah. buttery brioche, brioche thing going on um, with rad acidity even coming through on the nose. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm getting a little bit of lemons too. Let's get some off camera pours. Yeah, let's get these yeah, let's get, get these glasses full. Um, Chaz usually says this. I'm going to say it this time. He took the words out of my mouth pretty much. There's not a whole lot left to say. No, that's good. I've got a little bit of honey going on in there too, uh, but thoroughly enjoyable nose. Honestly, I'll even go there. Everything I want out of a sparkling wine on the nose right here. That's really good. <laughs> yeah. The it's bubbles delicious. really rise up and, and, and kind of like the... Uh, what do they say? The mousse is the formal word. Mm -hmm. it, it is is overwhelming. It's too strong, but it's really full. Like I'm getting a big blast of bubbles across the palate. I am too. Um, definitely the the yeasty brioche things are are, are not so strong in, oh. in the way it tastes. I wouldn't describe um, this as a rich champagne at all. No, but it, it's got great like initial. The fruit oh, flavors initially have great ripeness. Um, yep. There is sort of like. <clears throat> I use this regularly in Riesling, mm. and I hate to like use it in Champagne. Do it. It's a honey crisp apple. It's sure. got it's got great initial sweetness, great initial ripeness, but as it, as you swallow it, it's got great tartness, lot a lot of tart flavors. Where right? do honey crisps right in the world of apples for you? Number one. That's that's no without best. question. It's the best apple no. ever ever created for for many uses too. Like this is kind of across the board. Your choice. Uh, we're talking about just apples. Yeah, just apples. Yeah, if I could eat a honey crisp apples, you're right. So that's a big away. compliment, right? When you say one tastes like honey crisp, that's, that's totally. Right. And this this has sort of things that were. Yeah, I, I I agree with agree with that point. And this has that some of those similarities I like about the flavors in honey crisp apples. So, well done. Yeah. But I, but yeah. Go ahead. I don't know the apples as well, but I I, I feel that the apple flavor descriptor is dead on, all the way across. I'm getting this big rush of the bubbles which keep things kind of like light and dry and crisp. Um, and then as we move into the mid palate, I'm still eating those apple flavors. Maybe you've been into it a little too far, you getting a little bit of the core in there. What is this? And it finishes kind of light. Like again, there's there's not a lot of richness here. This is light and crisp. I can't say what this is. There's good acidity, you know, you know. No, I have no idea. No. And I'm getting a touch of minerality light. Um, a little kind of like I'll say like. Do you know what this is yet? No. Well, I'm getting like echoes of apple on the finish, um, but the finish is kind of light. It kind of fades off. The mid palate I think is where it's got its strength. The nose is fantastic. Yes. Um, I could ask for a little more on the finish. We're gonna go. We're gonna go 89 plus for me, and I feel guilty about that. I feel like I should take it for more, well, but I want a little more on the mid palate and the finish to. A little more complexity to push it beyond that. On the nose, I really thought it was champagne. On the palate, I don't know what the... So, so there's got to be champagne, there's got to be Oregon. I don't know what his third one's going to be. Can you, 
You're not going to tell me either. No, um, I tell you. <laughs> Sorry, we've been drinking before this. That's okay. Um, now that I've tasted it, I'm going to say this is a very good Oregon sparkling wine. I might it's recant fine. that as I taste the next few. Where are you? you do you know? Uh, I, I, I have an idea, but I don't want to sway you at all. So because because that'll be the third the third one. Well, yeah, we have right. we have. Fair you're still, do, still, he's double blind. He yeah. has no idea. You're going to declare before are. the reveal, though, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, I'll fair. declare everything before the reveal. So, okay. Here comes wine number two. With a last minute reorder on my part. That's fine. <laughs> hey, you didn't hardly pour me any wine in here, Dick. Yeah, you complained about the rinse last time. You got to take it easy. <laughs> so, we got more editing for me. Happy New Year. Thanks, Chad. It's right at the start of the cut. You'll be able to figure it out. All right, so, wine number two. Wow, it smells like lemon steel. I'm done. I don't have anything else to say about the nose. Is that all you smell too? No, I, okay. A L- little bit of like floral, maybe maybe drifting towards elderflower, right? Like St. Germain, oh. but not that like syrupy sweet thing. But the, yeah. but, but the lemon steel is really like... It's, yeah, really it's, it's steely and it's lemony. And it's, yeah, I agree with the same. You got friends that have swords. I mean, we do. I know if you're watching this show, you probably None do. Nuns and spears. Yeah, I, I know you got friends that have swords. Maybe <laughs> they cut up a lemon with one of their swords. And they haven't done much with it other than that. So there's like what else can you do with a sword, man? I mean, look at it. it. Yeah. Stab somebody if they come to your house, I guess. Um, yeah. Doesn't smell very good. I, I if I had a sword, I'd cut fruit with it. You smell you like this? Like the way the aroma is? It's fine. Nothing exciting to me, but no problems either. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it's just basic. It's pleasant. It's pleasant. Oh, sweeter on the palate than the nose would suggest. Yeah, sure. Wait, big time. It's like all lemon lime fruit. I'm loving that elderflower suggestion. While the nose doesn't suggest sweet. I'm definitely getting some of that like Saint Germain kind of like sweet floral character on the palate, mm-hmm. um, which I like. I'm really fond of that. If I ever bring that up, that's definitely not a critical descriptor at all. I like Saint Germain when it's cut appropriately. If you drink it straight, it's like syrup, and that's too much. But the bubbles are a little coarse here. Definitely, but and not nearly as overwhelming as the last. Like last one's this big rush of bubbles. They're a lot more subtle mm-hmm. here. Yeah, the, the the flavors, the fruit flavors are allowed uh, more time to definitely give you the flavor, and the sweetness is. Definitely more out in the out in the out in the open. Um, and and for those of you who are like, why are you drinking sparkling wine out of these big glasses? I think it works well. I'm gonna give a shout out to David Spear. Mm-hmm. Um, runs right, right. Ambonet, fantastic sparkling wine champagne bar in downtown Portland. Um, he uses these a lot of the times, so and I think it really captures kind of the aromas and lets you experience the flavors a little bit better. I think the champagne flutes are kind of constrained, so. De- it definitely gives more powerful aromatics, yeah. and there's nothing that's lost on the palate. Yeah, it seems so, weird for the show, but this is honestly what I drink sparkling wine out of, given the choice most of the time. Same so. here. So, um, yeah. What do you think overall? Definitely not as the most, not as integrated, or not as. Can you tell me the, the price? Nothing. Nothing we're drinking today costs more than forty. Okay, good. So I feel better about this than two, because this is. Both of the wines are on the more simple side. There's not a whole lot of complexity. When we're talking about sparkling wine, sub 40, especially if we're getting into champagne, my expectations are dampened a little yeah, bit. Not there. Um, the flavors are totally enjoyable. I could drink glass Great. after glass of this without difficulty. Um, totally. And I enjoy agree with that. And without that, that boy, that's kind of like an underhanded insult. That's not what I mean. <laughs> I could enjoyably drink glass after glass of this. It. Yes, it's 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 not the most thought provoking, nope. uh, complex wine, but at the same time, it is absolutely delicious. Yep, everything right? so everything works. The flavors are enjoyable. Yeah. It's balanced. Um, just not a completely integrated. Complex eighty-eight package. plus for me. Um, oh, that's points. where it goes. Eighty-seven, right? eighty-eight points. For me. Some good things going on, but there's not a lot of excitement. I think I know what this is. I'm going to say California. Okay. Totally out of the gate. Could be Oregon. This is champagne. Oof. I'm sorry. But All right. Oh yes, the glasses. Come on. Mm. Give me that. Sh- you get it. That's two. Are you really bleeping me the whole time? 
uh, a lot of times. And seriously, every time you do that, that's like a half second mistake for you, five minutes of work for me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I will try not to cuss from now on. Who, who doesn't? It, they all love bleeps, though, right? It, it, it's it's it's. No, funny. bleeps are funny. Yeah, yeah, it's agree. true. But I wish I had it in me to have like the good eagle squawk that Epic Meal Time did. Like that's probably the best bleep I've ever seen. Yeah, the yeah. eagle squawk is right. awesome. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. One more. Yeah, a little more. Okay. Right. Pour it. Pour Setting it up. Pour it, pour it up. Yeah. Pour it back. This is the last wine we're gonna do on the show. If please. you could give us two cups stuffed, we would appreciate that. Oh no, those cups stuffed. Sorry. Walla, walla, walla. It's getting getting uh, crazy tonight yeah. on the line of serious business. Yes. It's the New Year's show. Smell this from here. The New Year's show light. This is what the. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> it smells like sh. I don't think it's coarse, but. <laughs> it's like rotting cabbage. That smells horrible. It reminds me of like the. Skin on brie cheese, kind of like like you know, all of your friends ate the middle out of the cheese, and you're like, oh, do I eat kind of some of the rind, or do I eat? This is the no same cheese. thing. This is the same thing that happened to that champagne that. that I, yeah. Oh. No, there's a little cabbage in it. This has to be a flaw, right, Matt? It's DMS. Yeah. Right? Okay. What's DMS? It's the cabbage. I mean, it, it's it's bacterial, even, isn't it? Oh. I think so. Yeah. Oh. It's something with the yeast, actually, if I recall correctly. Don't quote me on that, but I think... We're gonna, yeah, we're going to drink it and see what happens. This is probably going to be disqualified. Ooh. No, it's bad. It's a little bit of butterscotch. There's some sweetness that comes through. A little bit of apple flavors, but the... Close that point. Let's see if we can... I believed... Well, I'll take that one back. Close pin wine, I can do this. I'm getting like pears. Unless it was the cheapest one. And butterscotch. It's bad though. And a little awkward acidity on the fit. It doesn't sit well. Mm. Save it, I need to pour it back in the bottle. Oof. We're gonna disqualify this. This is broken. This can't that be. This sucks for a New Year's show. This can't be this can't be what it's meant to be. No, we still had a good two wines. Let's bring those two out. There are blind bags in front of Robin. We can do reveals in, in a... Uh... Well, so, first wine for me is Champagne. Second wine for me is Oregon. And then this one... First be, wine for me is Champagne. Be, second wine for me is Cali. Second wine's Cali? Second wine's Cali for me. So there we go. We got a little difference of opinion. Yeah. We're going to leave the third off because... The third, well, the third one... I, third one's Cali to me. Because the second two, okay. I, I've got zero. I see. You know what? Where's it here? You know what? We're we're, we're gonna do this, Matt. You want me to bag that one too? Yeah. I have a bag. You have the bag for it. That's fine. Yeah. Oh, it's bad. Okay. This is the same thing that happened to that champagne that I was drinking that I wanted to return, but I. This is why you don't buy wine at Fred Meyer. Really? So if you take it back to the the. Oh, they'll only give you the same thing. Well, they're like, we'll give you another one. Oh. Oh, fuck, I want another one. This is horrible. Hey, that's four. It tastes like Oh, four. five. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, I. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, it, that that's broken. And I don't know enough wine making about wine making to know when that happens, but. Uh, oh, f I was let's wrong. See. Okay, okay, okay. I'm wrong. Chaz knows what happens. Wine number one. We're going to get to the other ones later. Wine number one. No way. No. Oh, this is two. champagne, Marie Corton, resonance. This, this is pretty solid stuff, right? Yeah, you, you actually scored this. Bucks? 37. Yeah. Okay. I scored that's, what? You scored a 92 points on Slow Tracker, and that's why I put it on Oh, the show. very nice. I... <laughs> okay, good. I was solid right. stuff. <sighs> yeah. Champagne. Wait, this is wine number two? Yeah. Yes. Wine number two? Argot. Hey, nice. Yeah. All right, good job. Yeah, two thousand ten. Twenty-one dollars a bottle. That's solid stuff. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Good, good performance. Good. We can, we can hate on something that we're not attached to. But honestly, like coming right after a forty-dollar champagne or a forty-five-dollar champagne. It, so I paid thirty-seven for it, but it's on the. It's, it's definitely more around forty-five to fifty. Um, great performance. 
right after a really high-end champagne or a, a good grower champagne. I'm going to say that too, like it was in, right, like I think we were talking about maybe the finish being a little short there, but all right, now we'd be brutal because... Transburg Blanc de Noir, uh, 2009. Oh, it's vintage? Oh, it's yeah. a little aged. Like the best champagne. It's vintage, David. Uh. <laughs> but but, but it's, it's broken, really. Like, I don't, I don't know if this is like a lock thing or a barrel or where if something went wrong. This it can't be what the winemaker, this can't be what the winemaker intended. There has to be something wrong with it. So, that's how it goes sometimes. Wine is difficult. It's and, disgusting. And that's, well, it's disgusting. You can't drink it. Boy, I, sure. I can't drink it. I wouldn't go that far. But, I can't drink it. But it's, it's tough. Something has to be wrong with your wine. Anyway, so, happy to have a good experience with the 2010 Argyle. Happy to drink this again. Yeah. Thanks for picking it out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed a little bit of drama with the show tonight. Question of the day for the New Year show. What you got, Chaz? Uh, do you mind me cussing? Because Dan really doesn't like it. Or do you think it's funnier when I bleep it? That's yeah, do you, do, you mind, do you mind the bleeps? Or would you prefer I'm me sorry. just letting him run wild with his <laughs> mouth? This is a good show to ask that question, right? Yeah. It's not serious business. God, I'm drunk. There right. we go. Thanks for watching. We will see you with some more wines next week. Seriously. <laughs>